Hi there folks, Borislav247 here with another video and on this video I'm going to show you all what I consider to be the best farming area in Dying Light 2 in order to get infected trophies. Now there are a number of reasons which I've already printed on screen and I'm just going to go through them very quickly. First of all, you require limited use of any melee weapons. This is fantastic, especially considering that Techland have recently changed the correct charm, so you no longer now have the ability to upgrade your melee weapons again with full durability unless you use 666 pieces of scrap. The trophies and loot that you get from this area will always remain there even if you die. Very, very important. You don't want all that good work going to waste. There is no common infected to deal with because you are working at this area from height. The level 4 chase, when it becomes that level, is perfectly manageable. Or at least it's more manageable than what it would normally be. And finally, the area provides you with some protection as you are close to a UV light. So, with all that being said, let's get to the main video now and I'll show you exactly how it's done. Right folks. Before I actually get the action going, I'm first of all going to show you the area that it's all going to take place in, and then I am going to show you what you actually require to have in place before starting this, because there are one or two very specific items you need to have. So, first of all, the location. Uh, this particular location is within the central loop map, and if we go in a bit further, it's on the muddy grounds area, and you need to unlock this Night Runner's Hideout right here. Very important, because this is where all the action takes place. And basically, it takes place between the hideout and this building here. And there is a bridge that crosses to that building, which is very important to uh, this whole farming method. Now, if we come out of this, uh, items you require in order to do this. You first of all require to have, very important, uh, this crossbow. And how you receive this crossbow is by basically assigning four facilities to the peacekeepers. These are basically your either electrical stations or your water towers. Once you have assigned four, you will receive this crossbow, which also comes with a set of blueprints. Uh, and you need these blueprints as you are going to be crafting a very special type of bolt. Now, as well as this, folks, I'll go to inventory here to show you. You also require a UV flashlight. This is very important as well. And you want this fully upgraded. How you upgrade this particular item is basically by finding military gear which you can pick up from um, parachute drops, which are located around both areas of the map, whether it be Old Villador or in the, the central loop. Now, once you have these in place, you also require to have, for the crossbow, if I can find them, because I don't think I have any crafted at the moment but it is not those these bad boys impact bolts now i am going to make 50 of these because as you can see for to make 10 of these bolts you require 10 scrap one feather and three weights now scraps and feathers you generally tend to find quite a lot of as you play in the game weights not quite so but I'm going to show you how you can get your hands on feathers and weights and scrap for that matter very quickly because they're not difficult to obtain. Uh, so first I'll start off by crafting some of these bolts. I want ideally about 50. Which I have now got, that's great. Now. In order to get more of these, say if you were short of feathers, weight and scrap for that matter, the best area I can suggest that you go to is, I'll show you on the map here, it's in Old Villador. If I move over, is the good old bazaar here. Now, 
once you're in the bazaar, this is how you can acquire your items very quickly. You have a trader and you also have a craft master. The first thing I would do here is go to craft parts. And as you can see, they have a number of items. Alcohol, wiring, cans, rags, resin, scraps. Now, on this occasion, I don't see feathers or for that matter, um, weights, but I'm going to buy all the resources. I do this every time. If I ever go anywhere where, where there is a craft master or a trader, I just buy all the craft parts I can possibly get my hands on. Buy all, buy all. Now, once you finish there, immediately go over to the trader. And if you go to goods, now this man, there we go. There are your weights and there are your feathers. Again, I'm just going to clear this guy out here of everything he has. As you can see there, I've picked up four weights. Now feathers. I've picked up three feathers as well. So I'm just going to buy the whole lot because this stuff all comes in handy. No okay. Now what you do from here, folks, if you're wanting to farm these particular items is very simple when I actually start going the right way. There is a bed on the facilities here. All you simply need to do is to go to your bed, change the cycle of the of the day and night. Now, as soon as you have done this, just make your way back downstairs. And what you should find is the trader will have goods again. Now, on this occasion, I'm noticing there isn't weights. However, that's no problem. We will just uh, clear him out of everything he's got here. So as you can see, a good number of items there. Go with this guy. Again, just clear out what he has. And then, folks, it's simply a case of rinse and repeat. I am now back in the central loop area, and the area that I am heading towards is this hideout right here in the Muddy Grounds uh, region. And I've basically got back here using the fast travel method, which at um, some stage in the game, you will unlock certain areas like this. And from here, the next stage is to make my way over to the hideout, and then we'll get the action started. So. And this is the beauty of this spot, folks, because this bridge is broken. And because of this, the infected have to jump across in order to get to you. Well, if you take a look down there, folks, it's quite a drop. And that's how this is all going to play out. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is to get ourselves to night time. And it's very important, folks, can't stress this enough, that you set the night time from this location. Because if you don't, if you've traveled all the way across and maybe start the night time from somewhere else or just let night time gradually uh, come in through the clock, if you happen to die, you will be transported back to where you had previously um, started from. Whereas if you set the night time right here, if you die, this is where you will respawn. And because of that, you will still get all the loot that is going to fall down below or over here or over there. You'll, you'll see what's going to happen as soon as uh, this starts kicking off. So first thing, wait until night.
Okay, night time is now upon us. Let's get ready. I want the flashlight on. Not the UV one. This is just quite literally so that everybody can see a bit easier uh, when I'm recording this. But obviously, make sure my UV flashlight is in place. And then weapons-wise, for the first two levels of infected that come, I'm simply going to have myself armed with a melee weapon. I do not expect to be using it much, but it's just handy for crowd control if things start to get out of hand. Once I get to level 3, that is when I'm going to change to the PK crossbow, and I want the impact bolts. I may have to reselect the impact bolts when I go back to that, but uh, right now that's where I'm keeping that. I'm just going to make sure I've got the melee weapon, so now I simply look to get a chase started and I'm gonna take care by starting with this particular one if I, if I don't start the chase with this one it's okay because there is a howler further up near that um, air duct area over there that is the one that I usually go to but I want to get rid of this guy anyway so this isn't a bad uh, thing to start with Okay, now once the chase has started, I am going to use this here to get myself nice and easy back to where I want to start all this off. And here we go. Wait for them coming. As soon as they jump, hit the flashlight. And down they go. If they do happen to get across, just a few more um, presses of the UV flashlight, we'll see them over the bridge and down to the floor. As you can see, folks, it doesn't get much easier than this. Every time. <laughs> If you find that there isn't too many all of a sudden spawning, just go across, get their interest, and then head back. And it is just rinse and repeat. Yep, so far so good. Okay, not that much action here, so I'm just going to head back across and then uh, come back and... Now if they do happen to get across here, just a quick uh, kick will suffice to get them off. If you don't get them with the UV light first, that is. You will, very rarely get them where they manage to get behind you. It doesn't happen very often. There we go. That's uh, better. We're back to uh, normal service again. Try and keep myself well out in the bridge section here, basically to ensure that they normally will jump across at this way here, as opposed to coming from the side. Now, this is where, if I can hit the right thing here, yeah, and I'm going to have to select the right bolts. Oh, and it's not armed. No problem, though. That's what the... That's what this is for. As you can see, you can quite happily keep the virals at bay. 
the crossbow is all for the volatiles. I don't really want to waste any of the uh, the bolts on the virals. As you can see, the UV light does a fantastic job of keeping them all at bay. And when you do get a volatile, just take care of them. With the impact bolts, they are fantastic. Come on. Sometimes to just take a bit of encouragement, so it's back across the bridge and then back over again to the start position. Oh, here we go. Level 4, this is how you get all your unique trophies. I don't like taking out the volatiles from th that area, I prefer them to come over here. Like so, because it's much easier to farm where all the packages are going to drop once they're dead. Whoops, I <laughs> fired one too many. But as you can see here, folks, this is a fantastic method of basically keeping control. And if it does get to the stage like this, all of a sudden, where you're having to wait for the crossbow to get reloaded. Ah, it's... This is the one problem you can sometimes get, because you can't reload the crossbow when you are in the UV section, so... What I may end up doing here is just heading down and then I'm going to use this area again. Now if they do happen to get you, just respawn and this is the beauty of doing it this way. As you can see, this is where all the action took place. can already see a number of packages over here. And most of these will be unique trophies. However, the bulk of all the items will be on the ground. Just take a look at all this lovely loot, folks. Now, if there are one or two of the common infected, I like to try and keep it quiet by just basically taking them out with uh, drop kicks. Also saves your resources in using your melee weapons. Anymore, yeah, there's one or two more, but not a problem. Okay, I can hear one, but I can't see it. Okay, you know what? We'll get started on uh, picking these up now. I think I've got most of it, mind you. So what I'm now going to do, folks, is to rinse and repeat. So this is the howler I mentioned before. This is how I normally like to get a chase going.
Again, back up to this area, get right here, and we're going to do this all over again. UV light at the ready. Come on. I always wait every time, as soon as you see them starting to jump, just hit the UV flashlight and they will fall to their demise. As easy as this, saves so much uh, wear and tear on your melee weapons. And again, if things start to get a little bit um, as if you're not getting too much action, just head over there and uh, grab their interest. Okay, I don't know where he's going. Come on. <laughs> yeah, again, just going to go back across. Just want to drum up a bit more business here. Again, if they do happen to get up at the side, just kick them off. Okay. Pat bolts at the ready. Ah, there he is. The volatile should always have your attention because they are lethal. So far, so good. <laughs> yeah, I'm not having it. Yeah, I don't normally like to use the bolts on the virals, however, it's uh, sometimes necessary. However, here comes the good stuff. Come on, don't be shy, boys. A 
As you can see, you can keep them pretty much under control, even on, even on level 4. If you get a spare moment, where it's a little bit quiet, reload the bow. <laughs> it will save you making the same mistake as what I did earlier on. Come on. Oh! For some reason, I missed that volatile. Okay, get reloaded while I'm getting a little bit of time. As you can see, folks, this is a far less uh, intensive way of uh, trying to farm volatiles. However, now I have got a slight problem because I need to refill this. And However, I've got away with it. I'm just going to keep this going as long as possible. Oh! I had no ammunition left. <laughs> <laughs> there we go folks but no problem just respawn all the loot is still going to be there the only thing that you really lose out on if you die is basically your nighttime bonus for your uh, combat and uh, parkour XP so at this point here get the flashlight back on as you can see already, folks, now, this is before I've even gone down to the ground. But look at all this. And the majority of this lot here is going to be unique trophies. So, let's get right to it. Well, there we go, folks. That is the nighttime cycle over with. Let's have a look and see how I have got on. Folks, this is now my inventory after the nighttime has finished. So, over the course of one night, uh, this is what I now have. I now have 160 unique trophies, I have 108 rares. And I now have 682 uncommon. And that basically equates to... And not only that, folks, in the space of one night, look at this. I now have goods up to the value of just shy of 9,000 in old world money. That is the results of a pretty good night's farming. And if you do this over the course of two or three nights, you can imagine, folks... You won't take too long in getting your items that you want to craft up to the higher standards that you need, especially as you get nearer the end of the game. And that's it, folks. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Take care.